Just about 30 years ago, we didn't have any scientific proof of a planet outside our solar system. Today, thanks to advances in technology and scientific research, we've discovered over 5,300 exoplanets, alien worlds that await exploration. Initially, these discoveries were primarily large gas giants, but as our capabilities have advanced, we've started to uncover smaller, Earth-like exoplanets. Scientists have already discovered more than 50 exoplanets with masses similar to Earth, and over 800 worlds with a radius less than one and a half times that of Earth. We're still unsure about many such planets orbiting in the habitable zone of their parent stars, where the conditions may be suitable for life. However, this is starting to change. As our search for habitable planets continues, we're beginning to uncover entire planetary systems with more than one potentially habitable world, and we're already aware of at least one such system in our cosmic neighborhood. Our Milky Way galaxy is home to numerous compact systems that are centered around stars similar to our Sun. However, planets orbiting closely to these stars are usually too hot and therefore unsuitable for supporting life. But when it comes to colder, fainter stars, the habitable zone around such stars is much closer. This is Gliese 667, a triple star system located in the constellation of Scorpius, roughly 23 light-years from Earth. It contains the first known example of a system where a low-mass star has multiple potentially habitable rocky planets within its Goldilocks zone. Similar to Alpha Centauri, this system has three stars. GJ667A is a K-type main-sequence star and the largest one in the system. This orange-red dwarf has a mass of 73%, a radius of 76%, and a visual luminosity of only about 12% that of the Sun. At an average distance of 12.5 AU is its companion, GJ667B. It's also a K-type orange-red dwarf, about 69% the mass of the Sun, and it radiates just about 5% of our star's visual luminosity. And just like with Alpha Centauri, the most interesting is the third star. Gliese 667c is an M-type red dwarf with a mass and radius of only a third of the Sun. It's also incredibly faint and comparatively cold, with a surface temperature of 3,775 Kelvin. Yet despite its small size, GJ667c boasts a surprisingly rich planetary system. Originally, scientists thought there were only three exoplanets orbiting Gliese 667c, but after revisiting existing data and making additional observations, they discovered there may actually be six planets in the system, with three or even four of them being potentially habitable super-Earths. So, what exactly is a super-Earth? The term is used to describe a planet that's larger than Earth, but not as large as the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. These planets can be made up of rock or a mixture of rock and ice, and they may have atmospheres that could support various life forms. The closest planet to the star, Gliese 667 CB, is a scorching hot world with a temperature of 200 degrees C. Being the most massive one in the system, about 5.5 times that of Earth, this exoplanet probably has a very thick atmosphere and orbits its host star in just seven days. The three potentially habitable planets in the Gliese 667 system are all located further away from their host star, and they all have masses between one and five times that of Earth, making them excellent candidates for habitability. Gliese 667 CC, the next closest planet, orbits on the inner edge of the star's habitable zone, it has a mass of about 3.8 and a radius 1.8 times that of Earth, and its year lasts just 28 Earth days. With an Earth similarity index of 0.85, it is often referred to as the holy grail of extrasolar planets. Because of the low energy output, the habitable zone around the red dwarf GJ667C is located very near to the star, ranging from 0.11 AU to 0.23 AU and is entirely contained within the orbit of Mercury. In comparison, Earth is located about 1 AU from the Sun. Our planet would be an ice world if it orbited star C at that distance. GJ 667 CC orbits its parent star eight times closer 
at approximately 0.12 AU, revolving around the red dwarf every 28 days. Because of such proximity, the exoplanet is likely to be tidally locked to the star, with eternal day on one side and eternal night on the other. Dramatic temperature differences between the two sides could significantly impact the global climate of the exoplanet. Gliese 667 cc receives about 10% less light than Earth does from the Sun, but since most of the light it receives is infrared, the planet gets about the same amount of energy as our planet does from the Sun, which could help retain water on its surface and result in a climate similar to Earth. Because scientists don't yet know for sure if the planet has an atmosphere, and if so, how thick it could be, it's impossible to predict the exact surface temperature on Gliese 667 cc. If the planet does have an Earth-like atmosphere, it would transfer heat and equalize temperatures across the entire planet with a comfortable 30 degrees C on the night side. Living on such a planet would indeed be a much different experience. GJ 667 cc receives faint reddish light from its star. The other two stars, Gliese 667 A and B are located at a distance of about 230 AU, much further than the distance between Pluto and the Sun, and outside the planetary system. However, the two other suns would still be seen as a pair of bright stars visible in the daytime, and at night, they would shine as bright as the full moon, and our Sun would appear as a distant star. Unfortunately, the nearby red dwarf is known to emit flares or intense bursts of radiation and energetic particles up to a thousand times stronger than flares on our Sun. This could be problematic for any potential life on the surface of Gliese 667 cc because the planet is located close to its flaring host star. And the strong magnetism of the red dwarf may cause star spots that can reduce the energy output of the star by up to 40% for months which, combined with the lack of ultraviolet light emissions, would be another issue for the formation of life as we know it. Living on Gliese 667 cc would be nothing like what we're accustomed to, largely due to its massive size. The increased mass of the exoplanet implies a different gravitational acceleration on its surface. Since this world is rocky, gravitational acceleration could be up to 60% higher than what we experience on Earth. A person weighing 75 kilograms on Earth would weigh approximately 120 kilograms on Gliese 667 cc. Moreover, a planet with a higher mass can retain a more massive atmosphere, leading to higher atmospheric pressure at the planet's surface. If it has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, the atmospheric pressure would only be a few times higher. But if the exoplanet has a Venus-like atmosphere, the pressure could be several hundred times greater equivalent to the water pressure several kilometers deep in Earth's oceans. Despite its location in a habitable zone, Gliese 667 cc might not have the same conditions as Earth. Life forms on Gliese 667 cc may need to adapt to fluctuating in low light, potentially high atmospheric pressure and frequent flares. But this doesn't mean life cannot form in such a world. We've already witnessed examples of remarkable life adaptability on Earth. The two other potentially habitable planets are almost identical. Gliese 667 CE and Gliese 667 CF are both located farther out from their parent star, meaning they receive less energy. This could render them too cold to support life as we know it. But, unlike with GJ 667 CC, Having a thick atmosphere would benefit potential life on these planets, as it would trap heat and maintain favorable temperature conditions. The discovery of three such worlds in the habitable zone of the same planetary system is extremely rare, but finding four is almost unthinkable. According to one study, five planets in the Gliese 667 C system are estimated to receive solar radiation ranging from 2200 percent of Earth's current exposure to the Sun, making them all potential candidates for habitability. But there are other factors in play. Scientists have determined that for a planet with a mass equal to Earth, the habitable zone around Gliese 667 C has two boundaries. 
the inner boundary lies between 0.095 and 0.126 astronomical units from the star, while the outer boundary lies between 0.241 and 0.251 AU. Any planet orbiting within these distances from star C may be able to sustain life as it would offer the right conditions for liquid water to exist on its surface. If a planet is too close to its star, the heat will cause water to evaporate and escape, rendering the planet uninhabitable. This happens because water vapor is a greenhouse gas, which can trap heat and cause temperatures to rise to intolerable levels. Only the planets at the inner edge of the habitable zone with a larger mass are more resistant to the moist greenhouse effect. On the other hand, if a planet is too far away from its star, like the outermost Gliese 667G, it risks becoming covered in ice. While gases like CO2 can warm the planet and prevent this, too much CO2 can actually cool the planet down by reflecting light away. So, there's a limit to how much CO2 can help warm a planet. In 2013, astronomers announced that Gliese 667c has a minimum of six planets, with the possibility of a seventh planet, designated as GJ 667ch. Although highly controversial, this exoplanet could be the smallest one found so far around star C, with a mass of at least 1.1 times that of Earth, and is located just between the planets C and B. Due to its mass and proximity to the parent star, 00893AU, planet H would likely be too hot for any life to form. But planets F and E are confirmed to orbit in the habitable zone, and although the estimated location of planet D is outside the outer edge of the habitable zone, its orbit remains uncertain. This means Gliese 667cc, CF, CE, and possibly even CD could all be potentially habitable worlds. The discovery of densely packed planetary systems around M-dwarf stars, like Gliese 667c, suggests the existence of numerous populations of planetary systems out there, each with several potentially habitable planets. And since M-dwarfs account for more than 70% of all stars in our cosmic neighborhood, the number of such promising planetary systems in our galaxy is likely to be significantly greater than ever thought. Instead of searching for a single potentially habitable planet among 10 stars, scientists can now focus on one star to find multiple Earth-like candidates. As we develop new and advanced telescopes, our ability to uncover the mysteries of the universe is growing exponentially.